This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by MindThings.com. Uh, you've heard me talk a lot lately, optimistically, about the so-called perfect storms. The various situations where authoritarians have to use their power instead of just intimidating people. Americans are getting angrier and angrier. In this case, it's a gun rights protest or a counter protest. Some of them are getting bolder and bolder. This is a necessary thing. I don't know. I mean, this particular act that this particular guy did to get him tased, maybe that wasn't necessary. He touched an officer. But I guess we need to be mindful of the two dangers that uh, Liberty's Rising poses. Actually, I will probably think of three or four by the time I'm done talking this video. But danger number one. Well, I'm uh, honored to be here. Some nominally freedom folks start to get into power. They do the right thing, or the closest thing there is to a right thing, and pull back on federal bailouts and so forth. This is a Stefan Molyneux concept. It's not an original one. But uh, he says that, you know, when you start to see freedom lovers come into power... Uh, that means that the days of the government are very limited in number. It will be gone soon because no one, no one would give them, no one would let them have power unless there was some, uh, unless they're trying to just blame them, right? Because if, if, let's say Rand Paul gets into power in 2016. It's a real possibility, but then he s starts doing some things right. Well, if you do things right in America now, that's going to cause short-term pain. It's going to be like an exacerbated version of what happened between 1980 and 82. You know, Paul Volcker gains power in the Federal Reserve around 19, uh, 1978, starts to do some of the right things. Pain hits 1980, really hits, you know, from 80 to 82. And you saw people really angry at the Reagan administration, which was letting it all happen and I think pretty supportive of the, you know, the rush of brains to the head. If those types of steps are taken now, the pain will be much more intense, even if the the other end of it is still desirable. So, for me, I, I would much rather see someone like Ben Bernanke in there pulling back the Fed than a Rand Paul appointee pulling back the Fed, or, you know, Rand Paul being associated with it. I, I mean, it's just, it's better to have the Feds doing whatever terrible thing has to be done than to have a liberty lover doing it. It's great, you know, to see Ben Bernanke, you know, I mean, he's going to be getting heat for, for his, uh, you know, shutdown of easy money. Well, folks like us don't have to take the heat. If he hyperinflates, I think in some ways that might almost be better because whatever pain we experience will be all blamed on the Fed. Or the federal government. It won't be blamed on these upstart liberty folk who came in and screwed things up. Anyhow, that's danger number one. Danger number two, of course, is that the, the Federals will become so scared that they kill large numbers of Americans or small numbers of you and me <laughs> or millions of foreigners to try and create a distracting war. Now, some of this is probably already happening, and some of it already is happening. We know they've killed hundreds of thousands of Arabs and uh, Muslims lately, and uh, then there's that uh, the nagging issue of the journalist that exploded the other day, Michael Hastings. I guess one day it will be my turn. All right. We have a general sense that this crisis is bigger than any of the others that the authorities have faced in the United States. Or bigger, it's bigger. The U.S. has never faced such a financial crisis before. Nothing like it. And it is possibly big enough to destroy the entire federal system. They will go crazy to protect that. I mean, they've already gone crazy. Well, I mean, did you even know America had secret courts? For foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, also known as FISC. That was a name, that was a term I had never heard before until this Edward Snowden scandal came out. Well, assume, presumably, since I heard this from the mainstream press, average people are now learning that, the Amer that America has secret courts. I mean... Really? 
was it wasn't just a couple decades ago that NPR was doing a hit piece on the on the uh, Peruvian government because they had uh, they were uh, sort of hiding their their judges behind a wall uh, and keeping their names anonymous and their faces anonymous. <laughs> but but NPR was at least attending the trial, right? Now there are trials that we don't even know they're happening. Most Americans didn't know the name of the court or that such a court even existed. By the way, per, per, then, then Peruvian President Fujimori is, uh, last I checked, he was living in exile uh, under indictment of some kind. While every single murdering Fed president lives in luxury stateside. I guess you could take that both ways. You could, re- <laughs> you could say that I was referring to President Greenspan or that I was referring to President Bush. They're both presidents as far as I'm concerned. They're both our rulers. At some point you have to assume that the feds know sooner or later the situation in the United States is going to normalize and things are going to be more like they are in other countries. You know those terrible genocidal supposed third world places like Pakistan, Croatia, and Peru where the presidents have been thrown out on their ear and either in jail or can't, you know, had to flee the country. Pinochet, Allende, uh, Butar. It's totally normal in the world for people who have been in power to lose it and be put under indictment or face a revolution or have to flee the country. To keep this kind of thing from happening, the authorities are going to, some of them, going to be willing to do anything. And, of course, the most likely thing that they'll do when they see the writing on the wall is to attack themselves. They will have some of their people attack others of their people. Probably, you know, an attack on the government itself and try to blame freedom lovers for it or foreigners. Get the American people talking about something else again. I'm surprised they haven't already done it. Or maybe they have already done it. Who knows? I guess that's the third danger is, you know, the false flag attack to end all false flag attacks. You know, maybe they nuke themselves and make sure there are plenty of civilian deaths in the process. Anything to get the people on their side and angry again. Again, something other than them. I may act retarded and make faces for the camera, but they're the ones who are really batshit crazy. Things are going to get better, and their day is coming. But the survival rate for people like you and me is probably going to be under 90%. Just think like the lieutenant in Band of Brothers. If you assume your life is already forfeit, it makes doing your job easier. Have you played your fill of pro-government video games? Mine. Things. Dot com could be the solution. It's free, imaginative, and you can play it entirely in your web browser. Recolonize the smothered earth. Dig up cool artifacts. Compete with other players in a free market scramble. Just remember to use the coupon code RIDLEY. That gives you twice the mining rate. Mine. Ding. Dot com.